Good evening, folks. This video is meant to quickly summarize the science behind the Sun and Megaquake connection, to go over the last uptick's connection to it, and to forecast the next uptick in magnitude 7 earthquakes or higher. This is the solar polar magnetic field data set, north, south, and combined in yellow, otherwise considered as the total polar magnetic field action to which Earth is subject. The larger oscillations over longer periods of time are following the sunspot cycle inversely and the shorter frequencies are annual variation based on Earth's orbital tilt of 7 degrees from the solar equator. The work that started this all, including the eventual location forecasting with the Global Electric Circuit, an emission parameter on the seismoelectromagnetic satellite, connected the magnitude 8 earthquakes in history to the peaks and polarity reversals of these fields. Here is just the last couple of years. You may recall that last year's spike, positive in blue, saw the 8.2 in Mexico, and this year's peak back in August saw the 8.2 deep beneath northeast Oceania. At that time, our podcast on the website began weeks of looking forward to the next uptick that would correlate with a polarity reversal of the solar polar fields, where the yellow line crosses the baseline there on the right, if not for a magnitude 8 event, for the next uptick in magnitude 7 events for sure. That polar fields reversal indeed occurred on December 7th, just two days away from the largest earthquake to occur from October to now. While October saw one magnitude 7 earthquake, and November saw one on its final day, the 30th, four more struck in December, before a drought here in the first three odd weeks of January. Taking a bit closer look at that largest event, there were a number of blot echoes that struck the region in the days beforehand. These deeper rumbles, especially the one at the low velocity zone, indicate potential for surface ruptures and indeed the primary alerts at the time of the event included the region of New Caledonia, where 12% of the ring of fire total showed excess signal alerts and about 8% of the globe. Coming back to the forecasting of the next one, since that first ever attempt to go down to magnitude 7 range was a complete success, it is time to try publicly forecasting the next one, not just on our website podcast. And given the average of 90 days between peaks and reversals, that would put the best guess centered around March 7th for the solar polar field peak to the negative. While we similarly saw that lone magnitude 7 event in October of last year, that obviously does not constitute an uptick, and we could get a lone magnitude 7 event before we come to the actual negative peak. But we define these upticks as two magnitude 7 events in one week, three in one month, or if it's high magnitude 7 range or above. And so best guess right now for that uptick is somewhere between late February to mid-March. But with the caveat overriding that, it will be the solar polar field's actual activity that will determine when the next uptick occurs. If the uptick falls earlier or later than the forecasted time here, the prediction is that the solar polar field's data will reflect that it had a faster or slower shift to its peak, whichever would apply. To learn more about literally everything we talked about here, go to quakewatch.net and you can check out the links in the top right if you want the papers and conference presentations on the solar polar fields coronal holes, and location forecasting with blood echoes and atmospheric dynamics. The homepage video isn't so bad either, and is actually a must-watch if you haven't seen it yet. Below are the model descriptions, statistics, helpful guides, and resource tools to help you forecast earthquakes. That is quakewatch.net, and the prediction is for the next uptick in highest magnitude to coincide with the polar field's peak to the negative, which right now appears to be due up before the equinox. Be safe, everyone.